Hey guys, you made it. Welcome to episode 34 of the About to Break podcast. One of the great things about doing this program is I get to sit down with uh, with longtime friends. And while I'm blessed to have lots of friends who are interested in the same things I am, my guest on the program this week is my oldest and dearest friend in magic, Jimmy H., otherwise known as James Holguin. James and I met at a little magic shop in La Puente, California when we were just kids. We talk all about that. I'm going to, fair warning guys, this is probably the geekiest episode we've done as far as it comes to magic to the point where we um well we end up singing songs from david copperfield specials so it doesn't get geekier than that if we were at a band camp solely for drum majors from cleveland ohio it could not get dorkier than it does on this podcast but if you like magic you'll enjoy it and if you just like uh hearing good friends talk about crazy stuff you'll enjoy it as well. James and I actually start tomorrow night a run at the Magic Castle here in Hollywood, and we couldn't be more excited about that. Uh, we talk about our time being kids there in the junior program, and it's 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 really fun because the show we're doing is kind of a throwback to that time. Uh, we've got some, some fun little vignettes planned. So anyway, if you're anywhere near the castle and got access to it, please come up and see us. We would love to see you there. We'll be in the Peller Theater, three shows a night. We've got an eight o'clock show, a 10 o'clock show, and an 11.30 show Thursday night through Sunday night at the Peller Theater at the Magic Castle. Hope to see you guys there. Also want to give you a heads up, a week from this Sunday on August 13th, we've got the next Jokers and Aces show at Nerd Melt, and uh, it's going to be an absolute blast. Tickets to that are available by going to abouttobreakpodcast.com or taylorhughes.com forward slash live. And again, like always, you can click the links right here on the podcast to get to those. Anyway, guys, let's get to it. Sit back, relax, and enjoy my conversation with Jimmy H. No, I'm not a writer. Okay. Something is about to break. This is my longest running magic buddy. Oh, yeah. Known on stage as Jimmy H., but I've known him as James for years and years. How's it going? About to break, audience. Welcome, Mr. James Holguin. Oh, man. Glad to be here, Taylor. Thanks for having me. We decided last minute, we've been talking about doing this at some point, to mm-hmm. sit down and have a conversation. But Glad. we're actually, uh, let's see, this comes out Wednesday, tomorrow night, Thursday, August 3rd, we start a run at the Magic Castle. I'm just completely excited about that. <laughs> this is going to be pretty rad, man. Oh, I love it. I this, love it. The, James and I met. Well, we didn't meet at the castle. We met long before. We then. met long before uh, at a little little magic shop called the Magic Shop um, in La Puente, <laughs> aptly, California. Happily titled. Yeah. This, this is back when you didn't buy things online. You actually oh, went into no, a store no. that smelled kind of funky. <laughs> That's right. It had a liquor store around the corner. And, yep. You know, and you'd go in, and there'd be all these amazing things on the shelves, and. Um, Lots of shiny boxes. Oh, man. And then the guy behind the counter was just trying to sell you everything. Dude, but it was cool because he wanted uh, because he wanted to sell stuff, he'd let you play with anything. Oh, yeah. Which most magic shops, it's very much like you're buying the secret. So they wouldn't let you touch anything until mm-hmm. you've already paid for it. But That's right. But at the La Puente magic shop, it was like, you want to go climb inside this box and shove swords in each other? <laughs> oh, I know. Wasn't that great being able to stand on? There was a stage, There too. was a stage. The stage. And we would that do, was, cool. uh, was it Friday night we would do? There would be the, the magic show? Friday night magic shows. You know, I think it was like five dollars to get in and it was mainly you know parents and right. friends of parents and audiences and we were just working out our stuff but wasn't it the best oh it was so cool man yeah a lot of dudes that we that we know we met through there oh oh my a goodness of, a yeah magicians a lot of magicians know about the la puente magic shop yeah it was one of those places that they all heard of heard of at some point in time they're yeah. like oh yeah that little magic shop it, it is funny man because as big as la is i think at the time Back then, even there wasn't that many shops. There was there was uh, Hollywood Magic, which was Hollywood the big magic. one, That's and right. then there was Best Magic in Orange. Best Magic. There uh, was a Costa Mesa Hollywood. Magic. There was a Costa Mesa Hollywood Magic. There used to be one in Temple City. Did you ever Temple go to that? Magic? There was a no, Temple City. No, I never City. went to the Temple City one. Pasadena had one, really, as well. I don't remember the name of it. Um, and then there was Claremont. Yeah. It was oh, K and L Magic. K and L Magic. Yep, in Claremont, right off the freeway. Welcome to the podcast where we just list off. Magic all the shops old magic that... shops, <laughs> and now all that stand are two in Southern California. Yeah, uh, the Magic Apple and Best Magic That's still right. standing. So that's right. 
There's something about that, man, being a kid and being into magic and oh, walking into a magic shop. There, there really was. I was listening to, to one of your previous podcasts, and you mentioned when you travel, yeah. you go into these shops. and like, Oh, dude. What an amazing feeling that must be to, to see all that stuff again. A week ago Saturday, I was in McKinney, Texas, mm-hmm. and there's a magic shop in McKinney, Texas. Okay. And uh, a couple months before that, I was at a show out there. And I met this young kid who comes up to me after the show and he goes, hey, man, I'm, I'm a magician and I work at the magic shop in McKinney. And I was like, what? <laughs> There's a magic shop? I said, the next time I'm out here, I'm going to come. So, so I text him and I was like, hey, man, are you working? He said, yeah, this shop is only open on Saturdays. It's like a like a passion project for the dude who owns and it. And you were there. And you, yeah, you go in there, man. It's open on Saturdays. And then like every second Saturday of the month. They have an attic. They call it the magic attic. And you take this wonky old wood staircase, and it's like that back room. Wow. Like, yeah, dude, it was rad. That sounds And they do amazing. shows up there. Oh, wow. I miss okay. it, man. And they're still there, and they're still there. They're still there, how long yeah. Are they, how long do you know when they opened? I don't know, man. Okay. No, it's Main Street Magic in McKinney, Texas. Which, okay. by the way, McKinney, Texas has these little gems of towns, man. Because most places in Texas, it's very, you know... Uh, very farm country and and very much so. My the, father's family comes from yeah. Clint, Texas. Where's Clint at? I don't know. Man. <laughs> <laughs> all I know is my dad would tell me, "Oh, oh you're all ancestors you come from Clint, Texas." So we were just talking before you came over. Katie and I were talking about how we don't know like three generations back anything about my family. Oh no, that weirds no. me out, man. Well, I mean, have you tried the ancestry dot com thing? I thought about it. I haven't done it yet. I got weirded out because I heard it was owned by the Mormon church, which is probably oh, really? just like an urban legend. Maybe. But I don't know. It weirded me out. <laughs> and I didn't do it. But now but now we're talking about it. But it, it freaked me out a little bit because I was like, I don't know anything about my great, great grandfather. And then you start to think like, what about now? Like and what we're doing? Yeah. Is anyone going to remember any of this? Um, probably. And hopefully not. <laughs> I mean, I love that I'm sitting here going yeah. like, does it even matter? And you're like, I really hope it doesn't. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> Welcome yeah. to About to Break, folks. Yeah, we are about to break. Dude, you and I, we met at the Magic we Shop in La Puente. Magic Shop in La Puente. And we always have to follow the Magic Shop in La Puente. <laughs> it is. The, because yeah. it's just one of those really, you know, and La Puente is... is Right in the, the heart of the San Gabriel Valley. Yeah, just you know. drive until you see the walls painted with vines. Yes, yes, absolutely. Yep. Nice, nice area. Um, <laughs> sort of. So, <laughs> well, I grew up close to the area. Oh, yeah. And yeah. Well, I'm talking to Azusa over here. So, oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. I remember uh, when I was a kid, if, we, if, uh, if I booked a magic show and it was in La Puente, I knew I was going to eat good. <laughs> because because people feed you, man. That's one thing mm-hmm. people don't understand is that when All you when you do magic shows yeah. for like kids' birthday parties, everybody wants to feed you. Which for being a, a chubby kid who didn't oh, yeah. have a lot of dough, it was like, yeah, yes, no, I will definitely. eat everything. Definitely. But you know that that uh, Joe, the magic shop owner, yeah. he was good about getting us little gigs here and there. He was, man. I mean, you know, they weren't paid a, a heck of a lot, but he was good about saying, can you do this birthday party with me? Yeah. You know? But you meet these older guys who are willing to, you know, give you a little bit of advice. I remember one day I was like, I got this call while I was at, this was at uh, in Chino at Mega Magic in Delhi. Oh, love Mega Magic. Dude, I was maybe and Delhi. I, Don't forget and, the and Delhi part. A magic tell, shop tell people, and Delhi. Tell people about Mega Magic and Delhi for okay, those who, just, who haven't had yeah, the privilege. Quick, just quick, a little bit off to the side here. Uh, Mega Magic and Delhi was founded by a gentleman named Sam. Um, yeah, we are not going to say his last name for legal reasons, but um, no, I'm joking. Anywho, Sam Would you just put in a like a like a, what's that thing? show where they change your voice where it's like oh show. yeah that would work. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, Sam had this idea to open up a deli, but he loved magic and he turned it into kind of like a it kind of had a coffee shop vibe to yeah. it. Yeah, but where you like go yeah. and just hang out all yeah. day. For- but it, but it was a deli, and then on the <laughs> other side was like all these you know slotted walls with pegs and these magic tricks on all these pegs. Yeah. And it was kind of it was it was great for us to hang out yeah. and have a sandwich and you know maybe practice stuff on stage. Yeah, because um, yeah, there was a full yeah. stage. Yeah, I mean it was great for us, and I mean and I think it brought a lot of the the youth in and made them interested in magic, but I don't think enough. Yeah, you know, unfortunately, yeah, well, it, is, it is a weird dynamic. The sandwich with the magic, 
It is. It was definitely. a good. They were good sandwiches, though. Uh, they were, and they served the authentic Chicago dog. Yes, I remember that. That was great, man. By Vienna Sausage, and the and the little sandwich uh, uh, counter was right directly across from the stage. So when you'd be doing a show, and he would pack it out, man, he'd get people in there because he'd do free magic show, and mm-hmm. then people would buy like food yep. and magic tricks and stuff. But I remember you'd be on stage and someone would be over there ordering a hot dog right, That's right. across the street. Do you remember, we, it, was, it must have been about January of 99 or 2000, between you and I, we were promoting that show we were doing. Yes. And we did, we were promoting it at Mega Magic. Yeah, that's right. And it was just, you know, you, Katie, and, and, and myself, and we were, you know, tag teaming on stage. Oh, yeah. I remember that show, the, the stage was so small. So small, it was so stage. tiny, man. little, little, and I mean, you were doing like larger, <laughs> like illusion type magic. This you is know? back when we all wanted to be. Yeah, I, I wanted all. to be David Copperfield. Yeah. I think you wanted to be Lance Burton. I wanted to be Lance Burton. You know, I think both of them. To me, I think they're both masters. You oh know? yeah. I think very, very few can compare to, to their greatness if we're looking at the you know present magician. Absolutely. So, yeah. I still tell me. I mean, hands down. Well, Lance was just brilliant. I mean, just so smooth. And oh, yeah. one of the last shows that had, I mean, he had like the big magic spectacular touring show feel at his mm-hmm. Vegas show. You know what I mean? Where he's got like a cast of 40 people and animals and huge illusions and he's disappearing and ending up in a chandelier. And Love that. So cool, man. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and he had the whole theater built for him in Las Vegas. Yeah. The Lance Burton Theater, to his specifications. That's right. You know, I mean, How cool without, that? without revealing much to your audience, to, to have a theater built to your specifications as a magician, that, that is, that is That's yeah. pretty incredible. That is incredible. Well, yeah, we did this little show at Mega Magic in Delhi, and yep. that was good. And I remember that was kind of, actually, that show is, always will stick out in my mind the most, because it was where I kind of started tapping into the comedy magic side right like me yeah you always did kind of vignettes yeah stuff. Like, I liked always, doing you vignettes. had a dove act a really mm-hmm. cool dove act yes yeah it was all silent magic i didn't really speak much yeah um but this was where i had kind of an audience i think there was a moment you guys needed me to kill like about a minute yeah. and, and i was just up <laughs> we had there. to go poor yeah. katie had to cram herself into a box somewhere. oh <laughs> my gosh and and i and i started doing like i started doing i think i, I think George Clinton uh, jokes. Or not George, not George, George Clinton. Clinton. George Clinton. Parliament fucking Dolly. You know. Yeah, Bill Clinton jokes. Bill you know? Clinton jokes. I happen to have a cigar in my pocket, so it worked out well. You know what I mean? Oh, my goodness. Um, <laughs> and then that was when you first got a taste of doing the comedy in Magic. Yeah, yeah. You know, and I was good. What I'm trying to say is I was good. Yeah. You know, and whatever it was I was saying at the time. I, it it and hit. People were laughing, and it hit. There's that. nothing better. Yeah. I, yeah. And I still, I love Magic with all. Most of my heart, <laughs> but true, but I mean, true. but the comedy stuff, man. Oh man, it's the best. It really. Here, truly here's is. my tier, and magician friends might not like this, but I say a really great magic trick is it transports people somewhere, right? Like it, it's something different altogether, and it's awesome. Mm-hmm. But then getting up there with no prop and just a microphone and holding an audience attention That's with talent. jokes. That is like a different thing, that's man. Talent. Well, I mean, it's all town, but that to me, yeah, I'm with you right there, right there with you. That's I've tried, I've tried doing stand up. <sighs> You've tried doing stand up. Oh, dude, I've yeah. bombed completely, <laughs> dude. So, I mean, I have all the respect in the world, um, but I'll get back on that stage at some point. Right, you, you got to do it, man. I mean, all my shows are magic shows. With sure, comedy. Sure, involved. same here. Yeah, but I, I have been giving myself this challenge of going. As long as I can, from the moment I step on stage to when I first do a trick. Yeah. Which goes very much against, I think, what we were, were taught as magicians of, like, do something right away that wows them, that ca- captures yeah, their attention. Yeah, exactly. And they'll but, love you. But, yeah, I tell people I love magic to death. And mm-hmm. if I'm, you know, lucky, eventually I'll work myself out of it. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. Oh, I that's that's it, good. That's, that's good. I like that. That that, that I'm gonna have to use that at some point. Dude, when I that may, that may be terrible. I I think it comes from being. I remember when we were at the in the juniors of the castle. The juniors. Oh, you should talk about the juniors, dude. We're well. And this was yeah. this is what's fun about the show we're doing. If anyone's listening yeah. and you're a member of the castle or you have access to the castle, uh, come up this week. James and I will be in the Peller August third yes. through the sixth. Yes. We got three shows. We do what? 8.30 or 8? What's our first show? Our, our first show is at 8. 
8 o'clock, second, 10, 10, and, and then 11.30. 11 30. Yeah. And uh, this show is really fun because James and I got our start at the castle in what's called the Junior Society at the yeah. castle. Yeah. And uh, which is really fun because last week was Future Stars Week. Right, right. With where all they the invite, magicians. yeah, they invite the younger magicians who aren't old enough to come into the club at night, but are part. Right. They've auditioned and and I mean, from my experience, passed a harder audition, absolutely than than we expect of adult members because you want to make sure these young guys are taking it serious, you know. Absolutely. Um, you know, the junior group. Don't know where I'd be without the junior group. Mm-mm. You know what I mean? The junior group really helped hone who I was as a. And not only as a professional performer, but as a human being. Oh, yeah. As a human being and how to look at things in life. Um, a lot of responsibility, too. I mean, yeah. we, we, given yeah. the opportunity, imagine being a kid who wants, who wants to do magic full time. And this is one of the few, few things that sets magic apart from other art forms is you have access to the best guys in the industry. Like, it really is kind of a brotherhood, you know? Yeah. Oh, no, absolutely. So... What's great is they they would invite you know Penn and Teller would come and lecture or mm. you know uh, David, David Copperfield, Copperfield he opened his, Lance Burton, he opened yeah his, his whole uh, warehouse and give the guys the a tour yeah I mean, so so it it really does give an opportunity to young guys who want to get involved yes. in the industry to have firsthand experience and then they'll give you like I'll, you would get a call from from Bob Dorian and he'd be like mm-hmm. hey somebody wants. Uh, entertainer for this country club gig do you yeah, want it you know yeah. and it actually pays yes and it pays and at being you know 15 16 17 years old and being paid a couple hundred bucks oh to, yeah to do card tricks or to maybe do you know 10 minutes on on a stage you're you totally. feel like you feel like a rock star oh yeah i mean it's the best <laughs> it's crazy and you look at some of the guys that came out of the i mean how oh, many so many how so many, many working pros today were junior members. I mean, so Kevin many. James, I, I, countless, Ed Alonzo, yeah, yeah. Scott Tokar. When I want to talk Absolutely. to him. He's, he says he credits his entire career to the junior program. You know? Wow, wow. So hey, Lacey, my dog hey, is hey. Hi, coming Lacey. in here just to shake her collar and make noise. It's okay, she has to make an appearance on each it's podcast. Okay. Maybe she wants to be a junior. Maybe <laughs> she just comes in to show us she's here. And then you talked to on. Matt, Matt Marcy. Yeah, you know? yeah, and Matt. He was, he was a, another one of those guys from our generation. Yeah, Joe you know, Ward and Joe Danny Ward, Cole. And, Danny. Yeah, it was. and so so this is what's exciting. I think about the show that James and I are doing because in, in the Peller, so the castle has different showrooms, mm-hmm. and uh, generally, you know, the if you're in the close up room, you're working by yourself. If you're in the parlor, you're working by yourself. But Maybe what was it? Maybe five years ago they started the Peller project. Yeah, thing? the Peller project where they added another, essentially another showroom to take on the overflow. Right, and the yeah. idea, the idea is, and it's only on the weekend. So right, and, and, and now started it's with Saturday and Sunday. That right, and now it's Thursday through su- through Sunday. Yeah, because some of those shows are really are standout shows. Yeah, you know. So and it's and it's fun because what they do is they take two performers who generally don't perform together on the right. regular right uh, maybe friends or know each other but don't have an act together and they say okay look you both got your own act and they put them in a room and say come up with something new and right. so james and i was it last uh when was it we were last in there it was almost a year ago almost a year ago this time almost it was the august ago. yeah it was it was the first week oh, actually it was no, september was, it was september sept- right no, I want to say it was maybe late July. I mean, we could look it up. <laughs> yeah, it's going to bother me now. I know. I just I just saw the picture of. Uh, it's late July, early August. I really believe yeah. that it is. Let's see. I'm gonna look right up. Oh, here it is. Here's the dates. Oh, no dates. <laughs> just this. no dates. Okay. Well, look it's at a that. great picture, nonetheless. See, we should repost that picture. Re- repost it. Okay. Right. Long, it doesn't have any dates. No, on. it just says let's, this Thursday, let's... Friday, and Saturday only. We'll have to add Sunday. We'll okay. edit this out. We're going to sound so brilliant. Okay. But the, yeah, the show we put together is called Together Again for the First Time. Yes, and we're going to be together again for the first time again. Yeah, <laughs> together. Yeah, together again, again. And so. uh, the whole idea is we grew up at the castle together. Yeah. And this is our first time, you know, yeah. quote unquote, performing together in twenty years. Right. So we give them, you know, a little vignette of of us being juniors and auditioning and how nerve wracking that could have been. Oh, it's so. Fun. And then later on, you know, we we perform our own. Uh, personal bits uh, amongst you know with each other standing next to each other yeah. and then we do a routine together and it's just a, it's a nice a it's just nice to work with you but oh, b dude. but b it's just it's it's 
fun to riff off of each other. Oh, you dude, know what it's I mean? so fun. Yeah, it's it yeah. really is laid back and uh, oh my gosh, it's such a like a such a great free. gig. Let's oh, just be honest, it's a great gig. The, the Magic Castle is the best place if you're a magician. There is no better place in the world to perform. No, because no, nope. and I've said this to nauseam on the podcast, but. You know, 90% of the time when you perform as a magician, you're an event entertainer. Right. And so you're joining someone else's party, you know. Mm -hmm. But the castle, like when you perform there, people came just to see a show and to see a magic show. Like, yeah, it's like magic. Where else does that happen? No, unless, you know, unless you're David Copperfield and or Lance and you got your own theater. Yeah. But, you know, I mean, like, but but it's the magic castle, you know, (sighs) like if people that know, they know. You know, it's the magic castle. It's so fun. Yeah. I love, I love, and I, it's it's so funny whenever people ask about the castle, and I try to describe it. It sounds dorky. Like there's no way to describe it and give it. Yeah, yeah. But it it really is one of those places that you turn. I turn it into like I, I'm a five year old kid again when I walk into the castle. Yeah, you know. Yeah, for sure. Same here. I mean, I I can't imagine. I can't imagine anyone that's that's been there since they, when, when since we were teenagers, right? There, having grown up. Oh yeah. And, I mean, we're hitting our twentieth plus year being members. That's wild. If we, if we count those years, yeah. which I do count. Oh those, yeah. They count them. Yeah. So um, that's crazy. That's, that's crazy, crazy, man. man. Uh, but I'm blessed, and I am, and I, and what Scott Tokar said about it, and crediting a lot of his career, I would say I would credit uh, a, a lot of my career oh, yeah. to to it because it taught me how to be a professional. I still think about you things know? that they taught us. I remember Diana Zimmerman. Diana Zimmerman thinking the same saying, thing, man, and saying she would tell us, she'd say, "Don't ever tell a client you can't do something." Yeah, <laughs> take the gig. She's like, the if gig. they say, "Can you do this?" and they have a budget, the answer is yes, you can do it. Yes, you can do it, and then you figure it out later. And that's how I got, dude. That's the first, the first time I ever did a stage illusion was because she said that. Mm-hmm. She said that at a junior meeting on a Saturday. Right. Okay. Okay. This was October. Okay. The next Tuesday, I get a call from this bank, and they say, "Yeah, we're we're looking for a show for our Christmas party." What can you do? And I'm thinking about what she said, right? And before then, I would do, like, close-up magic and then, a, like, a little stand-up set, right? Mm-hmm. And uh, and so I told them, oh, well, we, uh, you know, I can do close-up magic or I can do stand-up magic. Or we do this big show where I saw my assistant in half and, you know, bring someone up from the audience and, you know, do a special number with them. Yeah. And I'm just saying all of this. And I'm in my mind, I'm thinking about what she said, and I'm just... How I can ju- I do this? I didn't ever <laughs> think there was any way they were going to go for it. Uh-huh. I just wanted to practice what it would feel like mm-hmm. to say I could do something Good before you. you're ready. Good and you I, and so I said I could do, do it. And they said, how much? And I gave them a price that I thought was ridiculous. And yeah. and they're like, that's great. We'll go with that one. Wow. Which I was so excited about for three seconds until I realized I don't have the props. I don't have <laughs> I've never done this before. Wow! And that's when I called. Uh, I called Chaz. I oh, called Chaz, Chaz the magician. Okay. Chaz the magician, who was one of these guys who would hang out at that we knew from the, the, yeah, from the La Puente Magic, Magic shop. shop. And I called him up and I said, "Chaz, I know you do illusions. I'm in a pickle. I promised I'd do this." And he rented them to me for like next to nothing. It was just and oh, was like invited me over, set up all the equipment, showed Katie and I how to do it, and then let us take his props and do this show. Yeah. I just think like stuff like that is what for sure allows you to do, you know what I mean? For like, sure. No, absolutely. I remember Robert Rodriguez again, another oh, gentleman man. who I met uh, at the at the La Puente Magic Shop, who was actually my mentor. Oh, man. Um, he taught me a lot about manual dexterity. The best. The, the, that type of magic, but he also would would loan me his illusions oh, if yeah. I needed an illusion to to do or to seal the deal with the client. Um such a good guy. Yeah. I remember the first time my dad took me to the La Pony Magic shop, and I walked in, and there was nobody there but Joe behind the counter. No, it was before, even before Joe was there. Uh, um, Tom, Tom, remember Ferranti. Tom Ferranti. Tom Ferranti, that's right. Tom Ferranti owned the shop at the time, and uh, he was showed me around, and he says, hey, we've got this magic club that meets tonight. And, and, and I begged my dad, and my dad, God bless him, has always been, and both my parents, so supportive of anything I've wanted to yeah, do. Yeah, that's you know? awesome show a spark of interest and lucky enough they threw you know gasoline on it awesome so he brought me back we went hung out for the day we went got lunch went to the mall just kind of farted around and then 
It took me back, and I walked in, and this was the Magic Club. It was like eight old men sitting around a card table. And one at a time, they'd stand up and say, all right, everyone's going to do a trick. And one by one, they went and did a trick. And I remember Robert reached up on the counter and grabbed a top hat Mm -hmm. and just took his bare hand and reached up and pulled a fan of cards out of the air. Oh, my And dropped it in the hat and then did it again. And he's doing split fans, man, just reaching up, pulling cards out of the air. Yeah. And I'm telling you, James, I was hooked. I was just mesmerized. I'd never seen anything like that in my life. Yeah. No, so the same thing I heard when I first saw a card disappear, a single card right? disappear. Yes. I, I was like, holy. Yeah, this is man. not, this is like a different level. Yes, absolutely. This is like Hogwarts. Yes, that's Hogwarts. <laughs> yeah, and there was no wand. There was Two no, empty there hands, was no that's wand. It. There was no wand. Yeah. See, and you went in, I studied this stuff, but I never did it on stage. I mean, other than oh. like billiard balls, I never really did any manipulation. But you really, man, you. You invested time, oh, and you can still I'm do it. It's, it. I suppose it's like I can. I did. Is it, it this like past riding? Weekend. Is it yeah. like riding a bike, man? Uh, it is. It it tends to get a little bit. You do get a little rusty. You have yeah. to. You have to stretch out the fingers. I still have the manip cards from those days. Really, and I use them still. Um, I just keep them in a card press. Yeah, you know, that's what a well, card press is. When you put use your cards and then you stick them between two pieces blocks yeah. blocks of wood. We're so geeking out yeah. about magic. Yeah, right we now. are. If and anyone's it, not, it keeps if, them straight. So. Everyone who listens who doesn't, you know, yeah, no, so it's <laughs> doesn't really, know about magic is going to be like, what's going on? But yeah, but it's cool. Like you know, and 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 you know, I've had to learn how to do them with gloves on. You know, I yeah. do them with, with, as my as my alter ego character. So yeah, well, um, let's talk about that, man. You just oh. did uh, Midsummer Scream, right? Was just this past weekend? Uh, yeah, Midsummer Scream, 2017. It's uh, it's uh, a dream come true to be able to bring this character I do to life. Uh, dude, so, so I want to. We're going to get into the character. I want to talk all about mud. I hope you're enjoying this episode of the About to Break podcast. Three quick ways that you can help us out here at About to Break. The first one is to go on iTunes and leave us a review. Uh, If you enjoy the program, please leave us a five-star review. Big thank you to everyone who's already done that. If you haven't yet, please jump over to iTunes. You'll need your iTunes account information. Uh, But you can click on the podcast, leave us a five-star review. Just leave us a one- or two-sentence little blurb there. Let people know what you like about it. That helps us out huge. Second way you can help us at About to Break is by becoming a producer. Uh, Our goal is to have a 1,000 people given at least a buck a month to help offset the cost of producing these shows, and it does take time, and uh, it is a passion project. I will continue putting these out for free because I think it's a helpful conversation, Uh, but anything you can do to help us out by producing the show would be awesome. Go over to abouttobreakpodcast.com, click on Become a Producer, and see what that's all about. Last thing that you can do, and this one is also a a real simple way of making a difference, is just sharing the podcast. All right. When you see it out there on social media, on Instagram, Facebook, uh, go ahead and follow along and then share it with your friends. Let someone else know how much you liked it because it sure does make a difference. All right. Back to the program. Were you first interested in magic or first interested in like horror and like? I think horror Halloween came first. Set. Did it? Yeah, horror was introduced to me by my dad super early yeah. age. My dad would, he never, he didn't have a filter with what I watched. He was okay with me watching King Kong. And he showed you the old school the stuff Stephen too, King right? Stuff. Like, no, the old school yeah. horror movies were my favorite and they were his favorite to show me. Yeah. Because those are what he grew up with. Um, I had older parents, so he, you know, saw openings of like, you know, Frankenstein meets the Wolfman. Yeah. You know, stuff like that. And sitting in the theater, I mean, that was probably at that time where there wasn't that many, you know, movies with those kind of makeup no. prosthetics and stuff. So that was a big deal and probably really scary. Oh, totally. Um, but yeah, I was introduced to horror and I fell in love with horror at a very early age. That's awesome, man. Did you uh, did you always like Halloween time? Would you decorate the yard and that kind of thing? Uh, my not the yard so much, but my mom would you know decorate the house. Yeah. We'd always do the you know, jack o' lanterns and you know who, who didn't love trick or treating? And right. I had a, I had those co- those vinyl costumes that you'd put on. <laughs> Where it's, and then like the mask <laughs> is the plastic mask. with a rubber band. Yes. Like rips I mean, your hair yes, out as you're going yes. around. Which I heard that they're making a comeback. Believe it or not. So. Dude, I'm. I don't know why not, man. I mean, just, as just much as we made fun of those, then they went into like the full latex mask, which were horrible to like mm-hmm. get on and off. Absolutely, and you get so sweaty. Mm-hmm. I loved Halloween, man. Yeah, I still do. do. Yeah, 
Uh, I still do, man. I do too. You know, it's there's something about Halloween. I mean, the last few years that I lived at at, uh, at, a, at when I had a home, a house, yeah, yeah. I decorated the yard. Like oh, I yeah. went all out. Um, yeah, yeah. And I love it. It's been a that's been a uh, one of the eh, not sacrifices, but one of the de- Halloween is like a guaranteed, usually a guaranteed gig. You know, that's like oh, a big for time sure. for it's magic. A, it's, for, it's a month long gig. You yeah, can, you can be busy yeah. all month long. So but in the past couple of years, though, I've I've made this because I would every you know Halloween I'd be doing shows. And then I made this promise that I wouldn't do shows on Halloween so that yeah. we could do stuff with the kids. Sure, of course. But, dude, there's just something about being in the neighborhood and walking around and, like, totally trick-or-treating. Absolutely. I mean, I haven't had a Halloween off, and I don't, can't even remember since I've had oh, a Halloween dude. off. But I do love yeah. that vibe of yeah. kids coming up to the door. <laughs> I love that vibe of of them being kind of creeped out. Because, yeah. And I always wanted to be the house in the neighborhood that everyone wanted to go to. So I would get, oh, the, the, I would get the, the Hershey's bars. Yeah. Full on bars yep. and get the reputation. So. Did you have the house in the neighborhood that was like, cause there's, there's the houses that look scary, but they made it look scary. And then oh, there's those houses yeah. where they don't decorate, but you're like, I'm not going to that. Door. Oh, for sure. <laughs> yeah. You don't go, you don't go up to, yeah, you don't. I mean, I didn't at least when I was little. <laughs> yeah, I'd dude. ask mom to go with me. You oh, yeah. Know? Did you ever, like, get in the car and drive to, like, the fancier neighborhood? That definitely happened. Because <laughs> neither one of us grew up in, like, a, yeah. an aff- affluent neighborhood, yeah. you know? Well, and my mom also took me to my first haunted house. Oh, really? Yeah. I mean, I don't know what was wrong with her taking these first graders to... <laughs> to and I remember, we were first graders, and it was a little group of... I had, there was four of us little yeah. boys, and... And she took us to this haunted house, and it scared the pants off of all yeah. four of us. We were clinging to my mom, um, but afterwards, you know, it charged charged me up. I yeah. was like, "Oh my gosh, that was like the the rush of being so scared." Oh yeah, stuck with me, dude. That's awesome. And then when did you come up with? Uh, Cause you've been doing mud now for yeah, gosh, what four years now? Five uh, years? Well, Is it more than that? Probably. I mean, I guess if we were to count. From the very beginning, it was started in 2010, so that's okay. seven so years. Okay, so seven years, man. Um, so where did this idea come from? Because you always yeah. enjoyed Halloween and you enjoyed horror, and I, I know you would always do like the, go to the knots or you know Dark sure. Harbor. Before Dark yeah. Harbor, it was a uh, what did they it call was, it? Uh, it was shipwreck. Shipwreck. That's right. Shipwreck. Yeah, 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 yeah. It was that for many years. Yep. Um, so, so the name of the character that I do is Mud. Uh, that's M U D D. Mud the Magnificent. Dot um, com. No, the Mud Show. Dot com. Oh, the yeah. Mud Show. Don't the forget mud the double D. That's important. Double D. All right. Um, but the character started out. I I had been going to these Halloween haunts, and probably when I hit about twelve or thirteen years old, I started going to these haunts. Yeah. And I would go, and I thought it was the coolest thing, especially knots. You know, knots, oh, yeah. knots, knots. Scary farm, Halloween haunt was yep. just the place, the place to be. There'd be all this fog, and the monsters would slide, and then they would jump up and scare you, and then it was wonderful. And as the year progressed, and the years progressed, I said, I want to do this. Yeah, you um, want to be on the other. I end. want to be on the other end of it. Now, I had uh, by then I was doing magic for a living. By about two thousand nine, yeah, yeah, late two thousand nine, I was doing it for a living. And then two thousand ten rolled around. For some reason, my October wasn't wasn't booked up. It wasn't so, as busy as normal. Uh, I decided to go ahead and audition and become a monster. Yeah, and I became a monster ultimately at the Dark Harbor, Queen Mary's Dark Harbor. Right, right. And I be- and you know they took me. And here's the here's the interesting story. Uh, they didn't take me at first. They sent no? me. They sent me kind of a, hey, you know, we like you. you know, maybe you can kind of be on the backup <laughs> list. And I'm that, like, how does that feel to get rejected it, as it, a monster? And it, and it sucks because. <laughs> It, it sucked because I felt like I put everything into this. Like I was yeah. like, "This is my passion. I love it. Like I know I'll be an amazing monster." Right. And so I just graciously sent an email back, and then uh, and said, "You know, I know I can do this." Yeah. Uh, as a matter of fact, specifically, if I was an atmosphere character, not a maze character, you know, one that's in yeah, a maze yeah, yeah, that's yeah, stuck yeah. in one place, whereas an yeah, atmosphere, atmosphere can they can around. wander the park, right? Or yeah, a exactly. Region wander that around. In. I said, as an atmosphere character, I think I would be great, and I emailed this and i think i even also made a phone call and then they contacted me back and were like all right your first string wow so yeah that's red so you so you went from they told you no they were like no yeah and then you again hit them up i just hit them up i'm like i know i can do a good job and they 
And I proved myself. That year, yeah. I proved myself. You know, I was a very good scare actor. Yeah. No magic at the time, but the name Mud came in because I was scaring one night and some kid said, oh, what's your name, monster? And I said, Mud. I was thinking of the Primus song, My Name is Mud. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, the year progressed. And as in the haunt world, you have a haunt name. Okay. Um, so, you know, for instance, my buddy, uh, his name is uh, Rabies. You know okay. I mean? buddy yeah, Mike, yeah, he's yeah. Rabies. There's all these different names. Right. Um, my name is Mud, and everyone just starts calling you Mud. So yeah. Everyone, you know, and that's just, in that world, I'm Mud. Yeah. Um, Which is why a yeah. lot of people don't realize there is a whole world. Just like oh, there's a whole yeah. world of magic. It's total. And it's not there's only a whole world, world of stand up. There's a whole, whole world. It's a billion dollar business, too. Crazy. Billion dollar business. All um, year round, too. Year, and year round. Year yeah, round, but um, yeah. So uh, year after year, I would do this the scare actor thing, and then they realized I had to split my time between doing the scare actor thing and doing magic. Right. They realized that putting the formula together of being a magician and a monster might work. It was actually the director David Wally who um, f- first introduced me to the idea of this. So yeah. I went ahead and, and kind of played around with it the next year. And, and this was just like as you're strolling throughout the park. Uh, yeah, I was strolling and I actually had a show. Like they wanted yeah, to yeah, do yeah. a show. So I had some uh, performers I was working with. I worked with them and it worked. Yeah. It worked. I mean, granted, I hadn't found exactly my right. character, but at the year and the next year it progressed. And um, eventually, you know, it got to a point where I started doing mud elsewhere right. and a bunch of independent Halloween haunts at various locations in SoCal. And, you know, I, I can't take away, much like my time at the Magic Castle Junior right. Group, I can't take away my time at the Queen Mary Star yeah. Harbor. It helped teach me not only how to be a scare actor, but to also um, be a, an entertainer yeah. in, in makeup. Well, I remember, man, because we would get together, like, you know, grab coffee or whatever uh-huh. when this was all going on. Yeah. And it was funny because you would be, you'd have, like, a company Christmas party, you know, and it's going to be a family show on like a Saturday afternoon sure. in October. You'd go do that. Oh yeah. And be like the fun, you know, yeah. na- <laughs> guy next door. Everybody loves Jimmy. And then, yeah. and then that night you'd go be a monster. And I'd scare the hell out of was people. It, yeah. Was that weird at all? Did you deal with any like, you know, was it weird going from one to the other? Or was it easy it, for you to just it, slip into the other In those role? first few years, I looked at it as a way of like, getting out like aggression you yeah know what i mean in a productive fashion right you know totally. what i mean so it's like you know you scare people that you get a little boo and and, it, and it's kind of a fun thing i'm i'm of the belief that anybody in the performing arts should do two things okay read steve martin's book oh uh, born, born standing, standing up, up yes. and be a scare actor for oh, one night oh man I, i'm of the belief that those two things need to happen in any <sighs> so performer's good. life I, I love it and, and co- going from one phase to the other is, is a trip yeah. It's a total trip. But um, what did what it. did being a scare actor teach you that translated into your other I mean your performances even where where you're not mud yeah. where you're Jimmy H. Yeah. What what did you learn in that environment that, that you noticed kind of the helped? number the number one thing was yeah. approach. Okay. The approach. To approach people because you know, like you said, ninety five percent of our, our work is being in places that we're not expected to be. Oh yeah. So, you know, you have to approach even right. though, you know, the hosts are there and they know you're gonna be there, they are gonna set it all up for you and all this stuff. You know, no one else knows you there and say you're doing close up magic. You have yeah. to approach two people who are catching up or sipping on their cocktails. Yep. And you're about to say, Hey, I'm magic boy, wanna see a trick? Yeah. You know? Yeah. Um, essentially you- that's what you're saying. Right. So you know, that were me coming up as a monster and not caring, you know, because yeah. you'd go up to people and you just, you're, you're expected to be there. You're a monster, right. you yeah. know, and I'd talk to them and instead of like, I would snarl, I would try to scare, you know, yeah. I would, but I more than anything started talking as a monster and, yeah. but started with the improvisation. Yeah. That's, that, is that where your persona started to I develop? I think so. Yeah. yeah, I think so. So the approach is what I learned from doing the character more than, yeah. more than anything. And the idea with Mud is he's he's like this old vaudeville guy. He's an cursed. old yeah. He's an old vaudeville guy who 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 died and and is cursed. He's actually sold his soul to the devil and uh, is cursed to be this this uh, demon monster yeah. character and to perform magic tricks because that's like his passion. <laughs> yeah, so, uh, kind of a weird dichotomy, I know, but um, I I think it works. <laughs> oh, it's so funny, man. <laughs> yeah, it's at least so I make funny. it work. Well, so. yeah, it's so funny too to see this because you can tell that he used to have like a more like a standard show. Yes, but now 
Yeah. <laughs> oh, That's where I do all the car manipulation <laughs> stuff, but I have the gloves on. So. <laughs> now he's got this kind of attitude of like, I don't really care what you think about me. Yeah. yeah. And, and you know, and that's the one thing I love about doing the character. Like, yeah. Like this past weekend at Midsummer Scream, I, I just, I really don't care. Yeah. You can say whatever you want to me and, and well, I can either playing- walk away. I mean, I won't be rude, but I, right. I, I'll be as rude as I'm allowed to be. Where, yeah. I feel, where I where I'm not where I don't feel like I'm offending somebody. The moment you start offending somebody, that's right. you've, you've crossed a line. That's gotta um, be that's gotta be a little bit freeing to play a a very defined character mm-hmm. and be performing. Because I know one of the struggles a lot of performers deal with, and I deal with, is that when you put something together, you're you're basically saying, "Here's a a good chunk of me." Yeah, you know, you're not just doing yes. a show. You're not just It'd be like a, a singer who wrote their own music. Mm-hmm. You know, you are, you're saying, "Here's me," and if you don't like this, it's hard sometimes to separate the "I don't like the song" or "I don't like the person." Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, yeah. or I, I mean, I struggle with that. Where it's like, oh, if, if you don't like me as a performer, well, <laughs> that's me. Like, yeah, yeah, that's me. It's who I am. It's, yeah. this is why you hired me. I'm, so do you yeah. find a little bit of freedom when you're doing mud that you yes. can be someone else definitely. and still be definitely I mean when I meet people because I am introduced a lot around yeah. they say oh this is mud and you know I, I say hi I'm mud but you know I sometimes am like but you can call me Jimmy and when I'm not when I don't look yeah. like this you oh know? yeah 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 because I don't want to get I don't want to get pigeonholed into being this will this be my one and only thing right it's a it's i mean i'm I'm not gonna lie like the character i do is much more marketable than my normal jimmy h comedy mm. magic you know it's um, much more uh uh how do i say it? not unique it's good but, for marketing I but mean, who yeah, else yeah. there is no other monster doing magic <laughs> not really do you know what i mean not like really. you, you have very few and yeah. this is this is one of those things that i think a lot of people would would see a market like that and go i don't know maybe maybe not yeah. but the truth is and I mean, we talk about this, but you you've been investing in this for a while. Oh, the time, lots and, of time. You know, even just recently, starting to see it start to pay off with opportunity. Barely, just seeing it right now. But Barely, that's one yeah. of those things where it's like, when you get an idea and you think this is unique and it's marketable and it could lead to something, and then put in the work. Like, I mean, you invested in this when when it didn't look like there could be anything, yeah. and now you're starting to see. You know? Yeah. No. Definitely. And I mean, hopefully, over the next few years, it it grows and grows and grows. Yeah. I'd love to see it grow. I love the um, I love doing the character. Yeah. And I worked. And the makeup artist I worked with this past uh, weekend was uh, Casey Musman. Off. She's currently on the series uh, Face Off. Oh, right that's now. cool. So she's. Man. I, I got hooked up with her, and she she did amazing work. That's so um, fun. This past weekend, I had probably. I've had I've had amazing makeup always. All the makeup artists from the Queen Mary's Dark Harbor, yeah. Uh, all the independent makeup artists that I've hired have all been amazing. Oh yeah. If but you guys Casey, haven't seen, Casey, go- Casey just she took she took something <laughs> and made it her own. Yeah. And really just kind of went above and beyond and was definitely one of the best best makeups I've ever had. For those of you listening who haven't seen Mud or haven't got to run into him in person. Is it Mud the Magnificent on uh, Instagram? Is that the, uh, yeah? The actually, handle? it's at Magic Mud. At Magic Mud. At Magic on Mud Instagram. with double D. Don't forget the double Some D's. Some killer yeah. images, but yeah. the, I mean, you'll see when you see the costume and the makeup. It really is. It's like looking at a totally different person. Yeah, and um, for sure, it's it's one of those things where I think a lot of performers they get an idea and they go, "Oh, this is a great idea," but they don't ever put in the work. That's true. To, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, yeah, if you want to compare the two, you can go to Jimmy H. Magic. <laughs> like that little <laughs> right in there there at Jimmy H. Magic on Instagram. <laughs> That's right. No, I'm kidding. But um but if, if you want to see the the good contrast, you know, yeah. there is there is a good contrast there and you can see. I think you had a good time with it too because even just in the past I think you were ahead of the curve on like the whole escape room thing and all of that. Like that's I know those have been around, but not like they have in the past. Yeah, few years, I mean, right? I haven't. I, mean, it's I haven't really. I mean, I haven't really had much to do with them. No, say. but I'm saying like Halloween used to be a once a year we do oh, this yeah, for yeah. a Halloween, month. Yes, yes, it's a month and long. Now, oh, you start in you you start in July, right? You know what I mean. You start in July. Some start in March, right? You just did Midsummer mm. Scream, which is huge. I yes, mean, yes, it, it's one of those things where the I'm saying you're at a good time because there is opportunities out there 
that you've been investing in and now you're going to be able to reap the benefits of those where you know other guys who haven't yeah. built a character around it yeah no yeah. i mean there and I've, I've definitely inspired other actors yeah. that i've worked with at the at the queen mary yeah and you know i have a few that were inspired to want to develop their own characters you That's know cool. i mean i maybe could have inspired them i don't know for yeah. sure but uh, i know that i was the first so that was a yeah, good feeling that's rad, you man. know so that's rad if you had to do one if you had to pick one right now your jimmy h or your mud which one are you gonna go with oh i'd go with jimmy h yeah that's who i am that's yes i can't yeah. i can't hide behind makeup forever right you know? man that's true yeah that's so. true well let's talk man because it, it's funny this podcast and we're now this will be episode i think we're at episode 34 and it's crazy because before i even started this podcast i mean you and i would sit down like you know every other week and have coffee oh, when we live near each other right man, it was it was a wonderful time and yeah. we i mean these are the conversations and we'd have we real human being conversations <laughs> you know, like you'd, you'd, you know help each other out when we when we needed it totally yeah. man yeah totally yeah. and that's and that's one of the things that I think it's so cool. I mean, this this podcast was spawned out of conversations like the ones that you and I have. Mm-hmm. I mean, to this day, the type of conversations of, hey, man, I got this really cool. They, there's something weird about our industry where it's like you get a really cool opportunity and then that thing ends and then crickets. <laughs> yep. Yep. Just not good. Yeah, <laughs> and Terrible. it's. I mean, it's. You talk with actors, and it's the same thing. I mean, people look at an actor mm-hmm. and they go, "You got a commercial where you made all this money," and it's like, "Yeah, but he went on three hundred auditions that never yes. did anything." Yeah, you, you know, it's, it's painful just to think of. <laughs> it's painful, and and you know sometimes it's like that, right? Um, but you got to keep pushing along. I remember when you first were talking about this podcast. Yeah, we were sitting right out front of Rad Coffee, and yep. you were you were you were like. So yeah, there's this podcast idea, and you know what? And I'm like, dude, do it, do yeah. it, do it. That's yeah, awesome, man. So and now you're you're a half a year into it now. Yeah, yeah, a little over half a year. So congrats. Oh, thanks, man. Congrats. I mean, it's it's a big deal. And the and the, you know the 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 interviews that you're getting in there are are so good. I mean, to a magician, hearing people like Dana Daniels and oh, dude. and Matt Marcy Legend, and Mark man. Kalin, like, that's just... And we can actually download these things and, and keep them uh, for the rest of our lives. It's, you know, you know the, and you know this, so I'm not telling you anything different, but I mean, part of why this podcast exists is because at a point in my life when I was really, really in a mess, you know what mm-hmm. I mean? Like, had had a day job sure. that went south. Yeah. And at that time had killed my career as a magician, hadn't done it in a year, took a whole year off. Like people forgot I even existed and then decided I'm going to go full time because, you know, I got a family and got to pay the bills. And though these kind of conversations, like the real stuff, not not the, you know, turn on the Tonight Show, which is great. And if Jimmy Fallon ever hears this, we'll come on the Tonight Show. Both of us. Absolutely. Anytime. Why don't you come to the Magic Castle this weekend? Yeah, we're August 3rd through the 6th. Be our guest. Come on, Jimmy. We'll save you a seat. It'll be great, Jimmy. Anyway. But, uh, you know, I love, as much as I love, like, late night, uh, late night shows, a lot of it is like, okay, you got seven minutes to talk about stuff. It's not going to be meaningful. Mm -hmm. It's going to be some story of something that happened at the grocery store. (laughs) You know what I mean? The stuff that really got me through the crap season of my life and, and not even that that's all over Mm -hmm. is conversations like this and hearing other guys who have been there and, and there's just something about like knowing that other artists are dealing with the same stuff that you don't feel like I'm the one who's not making it, you know? Yeah. No, so, it's, 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 it's nice to know you're not the only one. Which yeah. Is, it, it's, it really is. And then you can help me. I mean, you can really help each other out. Yeah. You know, when things are good, sometimes you can pass on a gig Yeah, and vice versa. Totally. So it's a, a wonderful thing to be able to do it is man dude we have so much history don't we we don't do we? man we so used to history. <coughs> another weird thing uh, about jimmy and myself uh so we we met at the la pointy magic club we were junior members of the magic castle together yes. and then our first uh well at least my first real i had some other odd jobs but my first steady uh day job was working after school as a daycare counselor <sighs> At this wow. little little Christian elementary school. Oh, my gosh. And Jimmy and I got a job at this school. Well, and you had the job. You helped me get the job. Well, so. and, my, and my wife, it wasn't my wife at the time. We were in high school, but, like, she worked there. 
And so it was funny, man, because we would, Jimmy and I were like, our job was really to like keep kids alive while their parents were at work. Yep. But then we put a movie on and just talk about magic. <laughs> yeah, you know. We did a bunch of shows too, man. Yeah. We were always that's the thing too, like we were always like grinding trying to put yes, on our own show. Like for sure. And not even just like, hey, I'll come do your birthday party. We were like, we're, we're gonna, gonna a we're show. gonna you know, fill a room and sell tickets and this make is... curtains out of old sheets and <laughs> <laughs> And come up with acts having to do with the Wizard of Oz. Oh my goodness, dude! Yeah, you guys all got to ask Taylor about the Wizard of Oz oh. act one of these days. James has if if any magician, you know, hits it big and doesn't want to be blackmailed, the first person you need to take out is Jimmy H because Jimmy has old VHS tapes of all of us. I do doing some of the most ridiculous things. They were fun though. They were fun, and here, the plan is to one day have a have a some sort of a party. Oh, when I have a house big enough to fit everyone, and then just play these videos on loop. You know what I mean? That just would on be the TV. so awesome. Just to be man. able to see everyone sit down and just like watch an act. And be like, well, what's oh, funny oh. is magician. Here's what's weird about magicians. Magicians, we like. I don't. Maybe it's just you and I, but like we memorized other people's acts. Not to oh, do them, for sure. Yeah, but yeah, like watch them, them so anything. many times. But, yeah. That we could tell you on this beat of the music, he's going to produce yep. a bird. Yeah. You know? Especially Copperfield, man. Oh, man. Copperfield's music. There's right. actually a playlist. It's the magic of David <laughs> Copperfield on Spotify. Dude, let's play a game. Let's <laughs> okay. play it right now. Okay. Okay. All right. All right. So David Copperfield, for 20 years or so, 25 years maybe, he had a yearly TV special. Yes. And yeah. every year he would do an hour long special. Yeah. That was all new routines. Sponsored by Clorox. Sponsored by Clorox. And this cat, man, David Carfield to this day is still, he does like over 500 shows a year. Mm-hmm. He's a maniac. But at the time, he wasn't doing, now he does a residency at the MGM in Vegas. Yes. At the time, Copperfield would travel with four semis full of equipment. Mm hmm. The first two semis were all the gear for that year's show. So he'd load in to a new city. Let's say they go to Pasadena and they load into the Pasadena Civic Auditorium, right? And they load in. They set up all day. He does the show that night, does two shows. Then he goes and he sleeps in the, in the bus for a couple hours while they tear down all the gear. And then they, they unload the other two semis, which was the gear for next season. And he would rehearse all night long the next year's show. Oh my goodness. Because he toured constantly. So when else is he gonna rehearse? So he would tour he would rehearse the next year's show. While performing the current year. Yeah. Show. Then he'd go back, sleep on the wow. bus, they'd load that up, drive to the next town, do it all over again. Wow, that's a workhorse. Dude. That's that's, that's but every year insane. I remember Copperfield special would come out. Well, there was Copperfield special, and then there was the world's greatest magic. Like at the height of my magic geekness, those were awesome, man. World's greatest magic would come on Thanksgiving weekend, and those I would awesome. just sit there with back old school VCR mm-hmm. with the cord hooked to the TV remote, yes. and I'd just hit be record. ready to hit record, man. Yeah. Oh my goodness. And you, and you never heard of anybody that was on that show. Oh no, but we know yeah. him. Yeah, now Ta- we know I'm, them all really well. Oh, but, dude. Remember, yeah. like, I remember seeing Topaz the first time. Oh, my goodness. Dude. Topaz doing this. I remember seeing Jason Greg Fruin's Burn. Bird Greg Act. Fruin. Uh, um, Lance doing the doing the, the uh, fencing act, dude, with the Phantom. Yeah. We yes. just, we, James, at this point, we're 50 minutes in. We have lost every non magician. Okay, so let's There's let's three reel magicians. It in. Reel there's it in. three guys in Ohio <laughs> right now just huddled around a table. There's, there's Only three. eight old guys doing split fans on the corner at a magic shop <laughs> okay let's reel it in reel it in no we're gonna play the copperfield game okay let's play the copperfield all game. right so so i'm gonna name a trick and you gotta name the song all right okay all right. let's try so it. i'm gonna name a copperfield trick okay and then you name the song okay, okay. the cocoon trick where he has oh that's a mama by genesis <laughs> <laughs> without hesitation Mama, by Genesis. Dude, you just pulled that out of a holster, man. Yeah, man. That's an easy one. <laughs> okay, you give me one. I'm going to fail. All right. Um, uh, why did I say we're going to play this game? Uh, let's see. I will choose the uh, the blade. Oh. The blade, the vertical blade. Yeah, hold on. Hold on. You're probably no, you're probably going you're probably going song. through you're probably going through a few songs. I am, that dude. That sealed that was used by what was it? but it was a killer. 
Oh, dude. Killer. Killer. Dang it, man. But I remember in one of his specials, he used crazy <laughs> in one of his specials. Yeah. And sometimes I get those two confused. Oh, but dude. Killer. Yeah. Let's do like a few more of these here. Dude, I've already failed. Okay. Okay. All right. You know, I can give you another one. Okay. I can give you This is going to be a little easier. How about the uh, shadow ele- elevator? This is my favorite illusion of all time. The beginning of the show is an awesome bit. Okay. So the beginning of a show, an elevator drops from the, from the rafters. And uh, an image starts to uh, appear in the front, a shadow, and then it opens, and then David Copperfield appears, and it's all set to this particular song. Find a way to to my my heart, heart. (laughs) I will always be with you. Yes. (laughs) And so many songs. How about uh, Floating Rose? Della. Dude! You know them all, yeah, man. Della, yeah. If, now, if I, I were to pick... The dark house at the moon. If you'd have asked me that, though, maybe 15 years ago, yeah. um, I would have probably said uh, In Your Eyes, because it was on the television special. Yeah, no, no, no. He, that was only for the, mon- the mon- uh, montage, so... Did you want to... Okay, you want to show our level of geekiness? Sure. What was in that montage? Come on, linking man. rubber bands. Linking rubber bands. Okay, floating <laughs> rose. Floating rose. Uh, card, card on the on the window. Yeah, the on the Express. train. Orient Express. Uh, cigarette through quarter. Yes. Um, the 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 pencil through hundred dollar bill. We've lost everyone on the podcast. No, we have not. I think they're interested. <laughs> People want to know what Copperfield was playing in the nineties. Okay. People want to know. Inquiring minds want to know. <laughs> yeah. David, if you're listening right now, yes, David, you are you are the freaking man. You are man. Yeah, as 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 Dan Sperry once called you, DC money. You are DC. You money. are DC money. I yes. was I saw uh, five years ago. Is the last time I saw him. Oh, life. that's good. That's that's pretty close about me, me too. And I saw and I and I tell everyone this: when you see David Copperfield, you are guaranteed going to see. Every trick that you've never seen before, like oh, hands down. when you yeah. s- just, I mean, storyline in just conceptually brilliant thing. I mean, who else using modern technology? I don't even want yeah. to tell you what he does. Just yeah. if you're anywhere near Las Vegas, buy a ticket, go see Copperfield live. Yeah, it will make you feel like it's Christmas morning and Santa Claus is real, and you are a five year old kid again. From what I've been told, unfortunately, I've never met the guy. But I've been told he's a super nice guy. Oh, dear. So that, I ran into him once in has, Vegas. You did? Okay. Yeah, and he was very, very nice. He was nice. Okay. Yes. Good. And I, and I, dude, I don't get starstruck. And when we see celebrities a lot, yeah. I really don't get starstruck at all. Well, I bumped into David Copperfield and I was like, <laughs> hi. I, <laughs> I, 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 well, now, so now I felt that way two weeks ago. I was helping backstage. Yeah. And I met Paul Rubens. Oh, dude. Pee Wee Herman himself. Yes. Yeah. So that was really cool. Wow. Um, that was neat. That was a neat. It was just a. Yeah. It was just a. He said you did a great job for. And all I did was make a cameo on what stage. What did you say? What did you say to him? And I said, because you know, I was just making a cameo. I wasn't yeah. performing. Yeah. And, and he he made it an effort to come to me and shake my hand and say you wow. did a you did a great job on stage. And I, all I was doing was something. I said, oh, thank you so much. I'm a huge fan. But yeah. I mean that moment. And yeah, he was yeah. standing next to Dick Van Dyke. I could care less. What? I could, and I had not, nothing against Pee Wee Dick Van Herman Dyke. and Dick Van Dyke no, 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 together. No, you know, I'm telling you, like, yeah, they were hanging That's out. That's incredible. Yeah. yeah, and it was very cool to see him as well. Oh, but, yeah. like, I stood all I could think was Pee Wee Herman. Pee Wee Herman. Pee Wee Herman, like, he, yeah. it's, he can make an effort to say hello to oh, me. Oh, yeah. That was awesome. Oh, so, dude. so meeting those people, you know, that makes you feel. But Copperfield's up there, you know, and Lance was always so up good. there too. Lance oh, yeah. Burn. But see, he was always very accessible. Oh, he yeah. would come out after every magic show, and you could literally talk magic with him. Oh yeah, and he would talk magic with you. I love that. See, and so. that's unique to magic. Like even to the, to this day, Penn and Teller do that every show. That's so cool. Every sting, stinging show, man. The class acts. magicians. Magicians class are acts. accessible. We have really gone down a rabbit uh, hole of I magic know. geekdom. I that's knew this okay. would happen, man. It's okay. There, I think there's going to be enough magic geeks out there. They're going to at least appreciate are. this. I think there are. And yeah. if you are out there and you are uh, a fellow magic geek like us, and you're going to be around the Magic Castle tomorrow, yeah, August 3rd. 3rd. Thursday, August 3rd, through Th- Sunday, August 6th. Through the 6th. That's right. Uh, Jimmy H. and myself will be in the Peller Theater, and we would love to have you come, man. Please come by. Come say hey. Yes. Uh, it's a fun little show. It's different. It's very different from what either of us normally do. That's right. And uh, and we, we actually had a very special celebrity voiceover 
that we had to twist. Yeah. We had to twist arms to get. Yeah. Yeah. Both of them. Both arms. Yeah. We had to be twisted. Together again for the first time is the name of the show. Together again for the first time again. And, <laughs> and uh, yeah, it's going to be awesome. We're looking forward to it. If you're anywhere near the Magic Castle in the next couple of days, please come out. Check out the show. We'd love to see you. Please say hi. Let us know uh, if you heard about it on the podcast. And if you want to follow along with uh, Jimmy and everything he's got going on, it's magicjimmyh.com yep. is the website. Yep. And also uh, the Mud Show with two Ds. That's M-U-D-D show dot com. And uh, I'll put links to both of those here on the podcast. So you don't even have to write it down. You don't have to think. Just click on there. Go over there and check out all that Jimmy's got going on. Yeah. Just released a new demo reel, too. I'm pretty stoked about it. Ooh, the new mud demo. Yeah, Yeah, it's hot. It's hot. Thanks for having me, Taylor. I really appreciate it, man. Dude, thanks. This is really fun and what you're doing here. You're doing the Lord's work. All right? Thank you, As as Adam Carolla would say. Right? Right? Thank you, man. As a former man of the cloth. There you go. I I really appreciate that. Bless you. Bless you, my son. (laughs) Well, uh, we're going to continue talking, but I'm going to hit stop on this. Come check us out at the castle. We'll see you guys there.